what you align yourself with will affect you. If you align yourself with a heater and turn it on, you'll get warm. If you align yourself with a fan, you'll get cool. If you align yourself with a shower head, you'll get wet. If you align yourself with prayer, you'll get answers. A lot of people align themselves with other things instead of prayer when they're dealing with physical or emotional pain. People often turn to alcohol, drugs, and opioid pain relievers in a desperate attempt to find relief from their pain. Align yourself with those things and you will get some pretty devastating side effects. What if I could prove to you that there's a far safer, effective way to treat pain and suffering without the use of harmful substances and costs you absolutely nothing except a little bit of your time? Keep watching and that's exactly what I'm going to do. On a side note, many people don't realize that they're actually meditating on negative thoughts focusing on all their symptoms, the pain, imagining all the things that could go wrong in their body. When this happens, it jars the brain out of alignment. These negative thoughts are misaligning the healing process in the body. The right kind of meditation, reflecting on scripture, and having a vision of health and wholeness aligns our mind and our body for health and healing. By making just a few adjustments in the way we think, along with applying what science has already proven to be effective, can literally put an end to pain and suffering. This is not just a spiritual idea either. Science now confirms how the power of these practices can make the sick person well. Now let me show you what science has already proven that can reduce or eliminate pain completely, significantly reduce blood pressure, reduce heart rate, alter levels of melatonin and serotonin, boost immune response, reduce stress and anxiety, and so much more without having to buy one thing. Keep watching. I want to teach you how to stop the pain. Whatever you align yourself with is basically what you'll become. So if you line yourself up with prayer, watch this. You're going to get answers. If you line yourself up with other things like drugs, alcohol, you're gonna get side effects. You're gonna get bad ones. So which one would you rather do? Would you rather have side effects? Or would you rather have information? Would you rather have peace? Would you rather have contentment? Now see, it's so simple because we throw the word around like prayer, meditation, and we just throw this word around. And to be honest with you, I don't wanna point anybody out or call anybody out, but so many times we say we're going to pray and our prayer looks like this, Lord bless the food, amen, that's our prayer life. You know, oh Lord, I'm going on, a, don't let the plane crash, amen, that's our prayer life. Okay, I'm not saying that that doesn't help, I'm not saying that that's not a good thing. What I'm saying is if you really understood the power of prayer and meditation, I'm telling you, we do it more. Now the Bible tells us to do it, but watch this, I'd rather point to some science and let you know. So here's what it is. If you pray to a higher power, then that power becomes available to you. Would you agree? Now, for me, I'm going to pray through Jesus Christ to the Father. Now, when I pray there, then all of that power becomes available to me. I believe that, and I know that, and I live that. I see it happening every day of my life. But the question is, you can know about it, but are you doing it? See, you have to actually do it. Just because you sit in a garage doesn't make you a car. You, you have to actually do something. And so I want to show you what happens. Um, I don't know if you know this, but we're a three-part being. We're spirit, we're soul, and we're body. So when you look into the way we're made, uh, bodies are healed. Souls are delivered. But listen to me. The spirit, it has to be aligned. So we can do all these other things that we've taught you in the book on how to do things for your body and how to do things for the mind and how to do, but eventually we're going to have to talk about the spirit because you're going to have to line yourself up with something that brings something available to you in a part of you that can only be fed that way. Amen. The body can be fed from the mouth. The soul can be fed from the mind, but the spirit it has to be fed from a higher power. So, I said before, I'll say again, my higher power is Jesus Christ. 
And so I'm going to pray for him because I like, when I read the Bible, I like all the benefits that he promises me. So therefore, watch this, that becomes available to me. Now, the Bible makes a very profound statement. and Actually, it's in James 5.15 in the NIV. It says, the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. See, now we read that and we say, well, I have faith in that. But do you really believe it? When you look into this book, I intentionally, I took eight valid scientific research articles about the health benefits of prayer and meditation. Just a scientific look, not bringing any belief into it. Let's just see what happens when you pray, when you meditate, what happens to the body. Clearly, these studies show, watch this in case you didn't know, it shows that it lowers blood pressure, reduces heart rate, Balances the levels of melatonin and serotonin. Remember, those are the levels that make you sleep. Melatonin makes you sleep. Serotonin affects the mood. Remember how we talked about it? So your mood can improve if you start to pray and meditate. Boosts the immune system. Decreases oxidation. Wow, oxidation, that's that principle, remember, that will rust your body out and damage all your cells. Praying stops oxidation. Wow, prayer's an antioxidant. Uh. <laughs> Wow. Reduces stress and promotes positive mood states. Hallelujah. You remember things are good in the home when you're praying. The family that prays together stays together. And the marriage and everything else in your life. And this is a huge one. Listen to me. Reduces anxiety and stress. One of the number one problems that plague Americans is the fact that we're full of anxiety and we're stressed out. If you remember when I talked about Nerf 2, and Nerf 2 takes the hulk of inflammation and stuffs him back in his cage, do you know more than taking supplements, more than doing any other thing, prayer increases Nerf 2, higher than any of those other things, including diet. So that means while you're praying, while you're meditating, Nerf 2 is taking the hulk of inflammation and it's putting it back in its cage. We talked about all the damage that inflammation does in your body. Wow, and whoever thought of prayer as an anti-inflammatory? I don't know. It even enhances self-esteem. Maybe that's why the Apostle Paul said that you should pray continuously. If you were praying and meditating continuously, these health benefits would be surging through your body and would be helping you. It doesn't cost anything. You don't even need a prescription. All you have to do is be willing to do it. Can I tell you this? Prayer is the most widespread alternative therapy in America today. I bet you didn't know that. So it's very simple. I'll make it as easy as I can for you. If you align yourself with the great physician, you can stop the pain. Have you ever noticed your laptop freezing up, glitching, files slowing down, or not opening correctly? You may have tried all sorts of different tricks trying to get it back up to speed except for the most obvious. Now, most tech geeks will tell you that it simply needs a reset. You've been running it way too long without letting it rest. Well, your body has to reset the same way that your laptop needs to. It needs time to recharge and start up fresh. One great way to reset your body is through intermittent fasting. That's 14 hours or more with no food. Imagine. If you never shut down the apps on your laptop, you just kept running more and more applications without ever giving it a break. After a while, your computer would most likely start encountering errors and working slower. It needs a reset. The same is true in intermittent fasting. It gives your body, especially your digestive tract, a needed break to rest. You'll be amazed at how much healthier you look and feel, how it affects your sleep, the increase in energy levels, the amount of pain and inflammation that could be resolved when you do so. So let me show you how to hit the reset button and give your body the reset and recharge it needs. I'll teach you a simple way to implement intermittent fasting into your lifestyle and you won't even realize you're doing it. No starving or meal missing. I just want to give you some practical advice that can turn your health around and stop the pain. So let's talk a little bit about intermittent fasting. You know, really, what is intermittent fasting? So uh, intermittent fasting 
is designated as fasting for 14 hours or more. And that really qualifies as a clinical fast. So, you know, when I say that, people first of all go, oh, fasting. That means I, 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 I'm going to starve. That means, it means I'm going to be hungry. Well, l let me tell you, Jesus didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. So he must have known and just took it upon himself to, that we would understand that we're supposed to fast. And maybe we are designed to fast. And I think after you see from the literature, you're going to see that's exactly we are designed to do intermittent fasting. I mean, I think it just is a perfect fit. So the biggest question is this. So how can you fast and not miss meals and walk around hungry all the time? I'm like you. I don't, want to, I don't like to be hungry. I like to feel full. So watch this. What if I could teach you a way on how to do intermittent fasting and you wouldn't have to give up a meal? Would that be fun? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So all you have to do is you start around 6 o'clock p.m. So go ahead, have your evening meal, but just try to finish up around 6 o'clock. And then after 6 o'clock, no more food. You're going to bed anyway, okay? So just leave off that evening snack, go to bed, wake up the next morning, and wait till about 10 o'clock. I think you can be fine until 10 o'clock. Drink some water if you like in the morning. It'll make a big deal because it'll stretch the stomach receptors and make you feel full and sated. And around 10 o'clock, you're going to start getting hungry. Perfect. What a great time to break the fast. Now, you've done an intermittent fast. So when you do that, then I recommend you use a carb and a protein in equal proportion together to break that fast. You know, don't break it with some sugar product or something that's toxic for your body. Use something good like a balanced food, like something that's a carbohydrate, complete carbohydrate, and something that's also a protein. And when you do, man, your energy levels are going to be through the roof. First thing you're going to see is, wow, you're, it's going to be effortless to think. You're going to walk through your day and you're like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Why? Because when you intermittent fast, it initiates all night while you're sleeping a cleansing reaction. Every cell starts to clean itself. Every cell, watch this, starts to detoxify. Man, does anybody here want to walk around toxic? All you have to do is just start doing this intermittent fasting. And every day, not only do you clean up the mess from years past, but every day you're sweeping up the floors. You see, every day you're cleaning everything up. You're giving everything the once over. So each day you reset and start new. Doesn't that make sense? So intermittent fasting is powerful. Now, because it does that, it's taking away the toxins. It's damaging the cells. Guess what? Obviously, it stops those you know, inflammatory cytokines from being released in your body, right? Inflammatory cytokines are the things that make inflammation and make pain, make your joints hurt, make you stiff, make you tired. So when you start cleansing the body, those inflammatory cytokines are no longer released. Remember, if they're not released, do you remember the guys that sit on top of the cell, that NF kappa B, the hulk of inflammation? If there's no cytokines, he's not being expressed. And then if you have some hulks of inflammation walking around the system, smashing things, when you intermittent fast, it increases NERF-2 levels. Remember, the NERF-2 levels are what takes hulk and puts him back in his cage. So if you're intermittent fasting, you have an increased surge of NERF-2 and the hulk of inflammation is put back in his cage. Inflammatory cytokines are no longer being released. So what do you suppose happens to the inflammation? It starts to go away. What does that mean? Means I feel better. Means I move better. Means I think better. Watch this. Means I am better. Now to me, that is health and healing. To me, that's wellness. By something so simple. This doesn't cost you anything. Matter of fact, you're going to save a little money because you're not having to eat that breakfast junk that most people eat in the middle of the day. How many people have heard this? Eat like a king in the morning. Eat like a queen at lunch and eat like a pauper in the evening. I'm not here to pick on anybody. Scientifically, that just doesn't make sense to me. As a matter of fact, about 20 years ago, I did this study and I started looking at everyone that just kind of looked naturally thin. Have you ever seen those people? It's like, well, they can just eat whatever they want to and get away with it. So maybe I'll get an attitude. I just don't, you know, I just don't know. <laughs> through my lips on my hips, you know. We're all different, granted, but we all can't be that different. So what I started doing is I started asking questions and I said, do you eat breakfast? And the ones that were naturally thin said no. Then there's those group that always have trouble with your weight. Anybody know anybody like that? I know I'm not talking about you, but anyone that you know of that has problems, 
They just can't get rid of weight. Watch this. I asked them, and every single one of them that I polled, they eat breakfast. And they don't just eat breakfast. They eat a huge breakfast. They eat like the king in the morning. Well, you don't want to become bigger than your kingdom. <laughs> when you intermittent fast, now listen, for people who haven't been able to lose weight and they're stuck and metabolically they feel like they're not moving anywhere, when you start intermittent fasting, you better get ready because there's about to be a surge to your metabolism. You're going to see things are going to start picking up. Things are going to start cleansing. All those toxins are stored in the fat. When you start dumping that stuff out, that fat's just going to dry up and it's going to go away. Intermittent fasting trains your body to be disciplined. So why don't you try intermittent fasting for a few weeks, see the difference, detox your body, block inflammation so you can stop the pain. Many people don't realize that emotions affect not just the mind, but the whole body. Studies show that there's a strong connection between emotions and health, especially the link between brain and gut. Have you ever been driving down the road at a decent speed when suddenly you encounter a roadblock? Instantly, you slow down and have to make a decision which course of action to take. You can sit there hoping that the roadblock will eventually move. You can go back or you can take a detour. Just like encountering a roadblock when you're driving, the mind can often set up roadblocks in your body, stopping the healing process from moving forward as its best or fastest. For example, people who have suffered emotional abuse are often found to have stomach issues. People who deal with long-term anger and unforgiveness can often experience greater heart problems. It's so important to address the soul issues as well as the physical issues because emotions can block the road to recovery more than you may realize. And you want your neural pathways free and clear of any roadblocks to health and wholeness. It's not always easy to get past a negative roadblock that's been set up in your mind. Science has well documented the emotional influence on health in the human body. But even more important to understand is the devastating and even debilitating effects it can produce in your life if the true underlying problem is never dealt with. Thoughts and emotions can wreak havoc on the autonomic system, producing stress, all kinds of unexplained symptoms. Emotions produce thoughts. Thoughts produce conflict. Conflict produces stress. Stress produces symptoms, disorders, and even disease. These diseases tend to drain the energy system, leaving them depleted, fatigued, suppressed, and even oppressed. This in turn causes more feelings of despair, hopelessness, and helplessness which further traumatizes them emotionally, and the vicious cycle continues to repeat itself. Sometimes, sufferers have these issues for years, and the emotional ties become emotional knots that can take some time to untie. People who suffer from emotional pain and trauma quite often deal with chronic pain as well. There are many people who've been diagnosed with things like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel syndrome, and other painful conditions like these who have been able to overcome their disorders as a result of getting their emotional issues resolved, getting through their roadblocks. You don't have to live trapped by your emotions. So let me show you some things that may release you from that prison of pain. Let me help you get past your past and into a brand new future. You may be just a few moments away from finally walking away from all of those things that continue to sabotage your health. Watch so I can help you identify your roadblocks and show you a way to get through and stop the pain. You know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Have you ever really thought about that? What does that even mean? I mean, how can you think in your heart? Well, when you look up the word to think in your heart, it's a word, and, and it's akin to the word, watch this, cardia. Okay, so the word cardia, you see it again in the, in the book of Romans, in chapter 10, verse 9, when it says, if you believe in Christ, but you have to believe in your heart. How can you think in your heart? How can you believe in your heart? Again, that word is actually the word cardia. And so where that comes from 
is it comes from a word when the Romans would come and besiege a city, then they would take the main road of that town and they would call it the Cardia. So you'll notice the main flow of, where's the life at? It's in the blood. So the main center of where that blood is pumped is where? In the heart. We call that what? The cardiac, the area of the cardiac sphincters, right? We have cardio. We do cardio to push life around, you see? So the cardia simply means the main flow of thoughts and emotions that run through your life. It's not just a mind or heart thing. It's literally talking about what you're living. So as a man lives, so is he. So what you're thinking about is what you become. What you're doing is who you are. And so if you can understand that and grab that, you can see why so many people have issues in their life, especially when it comes to self-esteem. When it comes to, you have no idea right now how many people want to commit suicide. Somehow, the enemy has been effective in convincing their mind that they have no worth and they have no value. See, again, that's what's running through their life. That's what they've become. And so uh, there's even a study, and, and I listed it here in the book, and it shows that people have been abused. In some way, when they were in their childhood, if they had been abused, watch this, it affects their body in a physical way, and they had high propensity of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Now, everybody that has IBS doesn't mean that they were abused. But all the ones that were abused seem to have IBS, the higher proportion of them. Can you, can you imagine getting your head around that? So actually, you hold these emotions and you hold them inside. So the main things that are going through your life can be destructive to the systems. Man, through this book, I have talked and talked and talked about what happens when the gut gets in trouble. You don't digest your food. You don't get nutrients. It's inflamed. Your body can't function right. So you have no energy. You have pain. You have sickness. You have disease. Now here we are talking about something like abuse or something that's an emotional issue or something that's an issue that you've been carrying around in your mind and you've had to walk around. You've had to live with it. It's guilt. It's shame. Whatever it is. And that thing becomes part of your life. And it starts flowing through your life. And as a man puts that into his life, you literally become that thing. And you start believing the lies that your mind is telling you about yourself. There's a thought, watch this, there's a pattern of thoughts. It's called perseveration. Most all people that deal with depression know exactly what I'm talking about. Those that have sufficient anxiety will know exactly what I'm talking about. And that is, you will take a thought. And you and I would probably hear that thought. It might irritate us, might sting a little bit, but we just move on. Somebody who perseverates... They take that thought in here and they run it and they run it and they run it and it's a loop and they perseverate and they can't get off it. So it continues to stimulate the negative neurochemistry. It continues making them feel bad, making them feel horrible. So we have to do something called a pattern interrupt. Anybody ever seen a baby crying? And you jump in and go, and it goes, Wah. perfect example of a pattern interrupt. So what we have to do is get a pattern interrupt. If we can just find the pattern interrupt, we can break that perseveration loop. All that negative neurochemistry stops. And one of the best ways to do this, I'm going to tell you, is really is forgiveness. The Bible teaches, if, you, if he said, how can you be forgiven unless you be forgiven? What it means, forgive means to release. So you're tied to the situation. If you don't release it, you're tying yourself to it. You can't be released until, until you release I had a friend who was going through a hard struggle and she called her pastor and she said, I've been dealing with this and I don't know what to do. What do I do, pastor? And she wanted pad, and she wanted stroked. And he said, it's simple. When it's over with you, it's over. <laughs> wow, some of the most powerful words I've ever heard. So what I want to do is for those of you who are watching, you're watching and you've been trying to get past things in your life and you can't seem to get past that. They just keep persevering. They keep coming back up and they keep destroying your life. I want to read you something in my first book called Healing by Design. And it says there's five short chapters in the book of recovery. Chapter one, I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm hopeless. It's not my fault. Chapter two, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I do not see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place, but it's not my fault. 
but it still takes a long time to get out. Chapter three, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter four, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter five, I walk down another street. <laughs> so once you can get rid of those toxic emotions, we can help you to stop the pain.